next person on the list is Steve North. silence, yet still deafened by the screams of eager accusers. Arising from the reverberating din, an all too familiar voice, my own. Disappointment pounds like ocean surf on shore, reducing one solid rock to sand. Emptiness o'erflows like castle's moat at high tide, blurring dreams that were once well-defined. Uncertainty swirls round like a whitewater side pool, halting progress once thought inevitable. Grief flows down like raging river over fall, reminding once and always of all that's been lost. Longing I am to break the awful silence with articulated despair, but such words just will not come nor do th such thoughts linger long, though often I want them to, because of you. Let hope fall gently like a warm April rain, restoring the promise that now seems lost. I'm going to do father lessons. <coughs> for as long as I've, for as long as I can remember, I've heard your resonant voice flow like a spring-fed stream with ideas, opinions, and conviction. Sometimes forcing me to wrestle with thoughts opposing my own. Others extending a helping hand to my own formulating mind. But echoing louder than your voice has been the witness of your living. From the plains of the mundane to the rocky pinnacles of crisis, my psychological tape recorder stored the lessons you taught, though you weren't always aware you were being watched. Contrary to the opinion of many, the status quo is not the pinnacle, but the lower form of achievement. Never one to accept the average, but always reaching for the heights, Life's brush illustrated the horizon, and I learned lesson number one. In a phrase, good enough isn't. Like old commercials for a people whose education was disposable, recognition of the innate treasure resident in the human intellect, exercising its breathtaking promise, our common household exercise. The second lesson firmly ingrained, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Beneath expansive night skies, contemplating the vast universe, awed by its beauty and mystery, exploring its outermost reaches as well as its unfathomable container, a third gained on classroom lawn. There is such a thing as awesome. In a world in which primary concern tends to be one's personal gain or greatest strategic advantage, your focus the opposite direction whether marriage or vocation or for some transcendent cause, I learned there are some things worth giving up everything for. 
humility and peace notwithstanding, showing what you cared about most, there was no mistaking the things on which no deal could be reached. Integrity, love, justice, and faith comprised your non-negotiables. Number five, there are some things worth standing and fighting for. It's not that everything I learned merited such recorded memory. Life has its pain and frustration, and father-son loves not exempt. But through the voice of your living, these lessons inspire me to aspire to speak loudly without use of words, and to live a life that's worthy of watching. in time where people once walked around sans clothing, and it wasn't just the style. Assured about who they were, nothing from the eye was hid, yet humanity's famous shame was nowhere to be found. Then, the day genuine was abdicated along with its position, and cover-up became the norm, and not just for a while. Security lost, Scramble begun, the best foot forward world reversed the good, and self-protection became our mission. I mean, of course, my mission. Bravado be damned, I admit it. I'm scared, knowing the real me as I do. Sure, rejection is more certain than acceptance. So I hide from you my lust and greed and reveal just the tip of my ego. My appetites and deep addictions, I don't allow a peek at the light of day. In hope of recognition or more status, ideal and practiced pretensions, while murder and hatred concealed in my heart convict me with no need of a trial. Possessions all mine, I keep them for myself, along with my myriad obsessions. When envy of yours becomes my deliberation, I go underground for covert maneuvers. I cover up in layers the marks of who I am, or believe I am, weak, wounded, fearful, and grieving, guilty, outcast, lonely, and ashamed, choosing life in the dichotomy of my own civil war and alone. Yet in the internal conflict, there's a longing for an everyday life I've seen little and known less, where hiddenness gives way to openness and perfect plastic melts into pooled veracity. This longing is not mine alone. I think it God's as well. Wistfully remembering a horribly lost moment. Wishing the former fully restored. I'm certain God misses the intimacy like me. But willing. Nor God's and mine alone this longing. I think it a human universal. We know that there's more and better than this. But we've been convinced it's too much to hope for. But again, this day, genuine can be restored to its rightful, eternal position. And cover-up no longer the norm, for it's no longer needed. Security won. Scramble, surrender. <coughs> Authentic foot we put forward. Recovering the good. Understanding becomes our mission. No, mine. Could we return to a time and place where we again walk round, sans clothing, not just the material kind. Acceptance assured and secure my place in the pool, my infamous shame unable to condemn, nowhere to be found. I guess there's only one way to know. So here I stand, Sam's clothing. And uh, let me just say that uh, that's my favorite thing about this.